Hello and welcome to our Lanvin webinar, where we offer the art of sound solutions. Today we'll be discussing panel facing and edge options. I'm Mark Rich, VP of Sales, and with me today is Rick Farthing, Design Engineer Manager. Panel facing and edge options. Common questions. What's scrim? Why do you need it? Molded acoustical board. What is that? Impact resistant panel covers. I don't know what those are. Why would a panel need a particular face? And where are these faces typically used? These are a lot of common questions that we typically get from our customers, and we're gonna address those with you today. So Scrim, let's get right into Scrim. What is Scrim and why do you need it? Rick, what is it? Well, Scrim is just a fiberglass layer to help smooth out uh, any uh, imperfections on the cores, as well as to dull down the yellow natural board color uh, so that the, any fabrics, especially any lights or dark fabrics, uh, can really show the, the color of the fabric without the bleeding through of the yellow mm -hmm. core. So mm -hmm. if you have a lighter colored flat uh, fabric or a lower density fabric, as an example, um, how would you know to choose a white or a black scrim? Uh, it's well, it's typically the color, usually darker colors from like cobalt blue all the way up to browns and blacks, dark grays. Uh, we'd use a, a the black scrim. A lot of the colors in the middle do not need any scrim, uh, and then white would be used in any kind of a light weave, such as the Guilford 701 uh, fabrics okay. or anything that's eggshell white. Uh, snow makes sense so um really I, at the end of the day once the customer decides what fabric they want what type of panel they want uh you or the estimers will determine whether or not the product actually needs scrim yes uh, we'll usually uh, inform them uh, as to what is common amongst uh, or uh, fabrics that do need a little bit more assistance uh, because of the cores and stuff. So we will always keep the, our customers informed and make any recommendations so that they continue to get the best product. Excellent. Um, molded acoustics. So again, a lot of questions we have on these. Um, what is it? What purpose does it serve? Uh, does it come in different thicknesses? Um, really, why is it needed and why is it recommended at times? So Rick, you being uh, a designer and you're building these, why do you need molded acoustics on top and what is it? Well, molded acoustics it is just that it's a uh, compressed fiberglass similar to the cores and similar to scrim. Uh, it's compressed usually to 16 to 20 pound density. And it's commonly referred to as an impactor face or a high impact face or just a tackable face and it is ad adhered to the cores. And this really does away with uh, all the hills and valleys of the raw core and uh, allows a nice smooth surface uh, as a for canvas, such as digital prints or a really fine woven fabric. So this would also help out depending upon where lighting might be in the room, right? Uh, because yes. of the light bouncing off of it. Mm -hmm. Yes, correct. Uh, wall washed lights or any lights that shine directly down the panel is the bane of all panels. Uh, it will show up and be merciless on any little detail in this. Uh, the MA tackable phase helps smooth that out and uh, to get rid of any, like I said, the hills and valleys and low, low points of the panel. It also has that because it is tackable, it adds that uh, impact. Uh, resistance so someone leaning against it uh, walking by with a briefcase any kind of a low impact uh, it uh, offers protection to the panel thank you uh, as Rick led into high impact perforated copolymer walls um, this is effectively another layer like you saw with the molded acoustics or with the scrim but it's a hard sheet of plastic that's perforated uh, this is then glued down to the acoustical core and then wrapped with particular panels. Uh, as we're taking a look here, 
You typically see these in high impact areas such as schools, gyms, um, any areas to where something's gonna get hit and or get damaged to where you want to refrain from that happening to keep the, the look and the integrity of the room. Um, do these come in uh, different colors? Like if somebody just wanted, let's say they didn't want the fabric, they just want the perforated plastic look. Is that something that our customers can get as well? It is, it is. Uh, but just like anything, uh, a, a custom paint or a custom plastics, uh, there is a minimum square footage uh, to order to okay. get this material. So there, there, that is probably the only limitation, but uh, size, they will can run up to uh, five or even six feet wide, uh, typically only five feet or down to exactly what the, the panel size is we can request uh, to have them wrapped in this copolymer. But the standard colors are gray, white, and black, and uh, those are readily stocked all the time and uh, readily available. Perfect. So let's go into panel facing and edge options. Um, we do discuss this with our customers quite a bit. Um, we sit there and we go into what type of edge do you want? And they say, I don't know what I want. You, you tell me what I need. And we take a look at the design. And then we also look at the purpose of it. And then uh, more importantly, sometimes we need to just find the most common one because of their looks. So let's get into a little bit of those details. As you can see here, these are the common edges that Lambin offers. Rick has pointed out before on prior webinars that we can do pretty much anything custom you want, but standard edges is what you're going to see here. Um, what's our most common and why, Rick? Square. Uh, square edges is makes up about 80% of all our all the panel details, and uh, it's we use it a lot in doing um, digital prints that have a panoramic display so it'd be like six panels all with one big scenic uh view uh scenic appearance so that uh you know when they're all edge butted together it's a nice tight seam and uh offers the best best quality the beveled edge is is the next most common one usually a quarter inch bevel which is ideal for blending panels together on an uneven wall, uneven surface, and uh, or to accent the panels if there's multiple colors between the panels on a, an array on the wall. So it offers a lot more of a cosmetic as well as installation uh, assistance. Assistance, mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely, okay. Um, this goes into a little bit more detail on our various edges, but something to take a particular note to is the perimeter edge, edge detail that you're seeing in the right side of the screen. Uh, as Rick had pointed out before, sometimes you have to put multiple panels together, yet you're going for a particular design or look. So what Lanvin will do is take a look at, let's say your mitered edge or your beveled edge uh, to go on the outer um, layout or perimeter of the panel and then put a nice tight square edge in between to try and blend all the various panels together. The more we know, the better we can sit there and plan and make uh, your digital art, as Rick had pointed out, or different styles and looks uh, flow seamlessly on your walls. Here's a beveled edge. Um, this is our standard half bevel, bevel edge. If you take a look here, um, something that Lambin really excels at is our detail. So you're gonna notice the grain pattern um, in the left side of the screen that's on the top edge. If you notice, it's perfectly placed on that top edge line. It's very difficult to do, but it's one thing that we really, really do well. Radius edge, uh, this is quite common as well. Rick, where have you seen a lot of these radius, radius edges uh, put in? Yeah, this the radius edge is uh, typically a, a smoother and softer appearance. Uh, a lot of yoga studios, uh, restaurants, some classrooms uh, or art art studios uh, do request radius edge panels just for that uh, cushion or billowy look about them. 
Here's our pencil edge. Um, this is a one eighth break, just right on the edge. Adds a little bit of softness to it, but yet keeps it nice and crisp. So it's a little bit in between. Um, we do find that a lot of people like to have this just uh, if they have uh, various depths, uh, they're putting them together. Um, sometimes, to Rick had pointed out prior, if the walls don't match up quite as perfect, this is a good way to get that square edge look, but not quite as tight of a detail. Uh, any other places where you've seen this, Rick? Well, typically this is used when it's a solid color uh, going in, around in one room, a hallway, or any kind of an office where they want to distinguish some kind of a shadow line uh, or to accent each of the panels rather than making it one solid uh, fabric wall. So it's a, it's a, it adds to the aesthetics and uh, it helps amplify the, uh, the details of the panel. Makes sense. Thank you, and that's the end of our presentation today. Thank you for joining us for panel facing and edge options. I'm Mark Rich, VP of Sales, and with me today was Rick Farthing, Design Engineer Manager. Should you have any additional questions, please feel free to reach out to us on the below information. Thank you, and have a great day. Thank you.